Looking ahead to 2012, it's December now that we're talking. The new season isn't very far off. How far ahead are you with a new car? It's on the usual schedule. Um, Later than it should be. <laughs> <laughs> that goes without saying. Yes. <laughs> yeah, um, I always have this thing which Christian well knows that um, we have lots of planning meetings and so forth which says when certain key milestones should be achieved. Mine is always that um, you need the chassis defined by Monza. You can do that and you're probably okay. So we've been pretty much on that one. Um, that means that the chassis, chassis into production, um, into manufacture, the, the gearbox similarly. Um, and then you work to, your way through the rest of the car. So that, that means the key architectural points of the car are set in stone. Um, it's now about developing all the details so, around. So Christian, looking, looking ahead to 2012, <coughs> with McLaren, Ferrari and Mercedes all doubling their, redoubling their efforts to catch up with and pass you, knowing what you do know about Red Bull, how do you see the season? I think it's going to be an exciting year. I mean, obviously we've got the challenge to try and build on what we've achieved over the last couple of years, but you know, Ferrari and McLaren, they're, they're huge teams, they've got great history, they've got huge resource, talented people there. They're not going to be standing still, that's for sure. We, we can't control what they do, we can only focus on ourselves and apply the lessons that we've learned this year and try and incorporate them into, into next year. And I think you know, 2012 looks set to be a, a, a real stellar year, you know, with six world champions on the grid. It's, it's going to be a really exciting prospect. If you put Lewis Hamilton, if you put Jensen Button, if you put Fernando Alonso into the cockpit of a Red Bull, would they win races? I've got no idea. You're not working directly with those guys, but they're, they're all world-class, world-quality drivers. They're all proven in what they've done in, in, in other teams. But, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's more to it to that, as I'm... Sure, you know more. Well, I was going on to say, would they win more races than Sebastian Vettel? What, 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 what is so special about him from your point of view? Well, Sebastian is a remarkable young man. He's obviously got a huge amount of natural talent. He's very intelligent. He's above all a very nice young guy to, to work with and hugely popular within the team. And uh, he is the epitome of what a young driver should be. He's totally dedicated. He's he, he's self-critical, he'll look at his own performance, he's always striving to learn, to be better, to improve um, and has a real hunger and desire to achieve success and uh, the level at which he's operated in the last couple of years, particularly this year, has just been outstanding. Does that apply to you too, Adrian? He is remarkably focused. He's a very intelligent young lad who, um, like all humans, occasionally makes mistakes. Sure. But when he makes a mistake, he takes, he learns a lot from that and he very rarely makes the same mistake twice. Um, I think what's also incredible about him is that he's, he's come from a, a small town in Germany, um, has shot in a very short space of time to international fame and accolade and that hasn't turned his head at all, there's no Hollywood element, element to him at all, he's totally feet on the ground. Um, you, could, you could go down to the pub and he would just be like one of the lads in the pub, so... What is it about Vettel that enables him to adapt successfully to Pirelli where Mark did not do so to the same extent? Is it attitudinal or physical or...? I guess it's a combination of things. He wanted to understand what the tyre was like. He, he pushed to attend the Pirelli test last year, having just won the World Championship, jumped on a plane to go back to Abu Dhabi to get an initial feel. He went to the factory to understand how the tyres were constructed. But of course that only gives you a background. He, he then obviously adapted his style of driving, worked out what the tyre needed, what the best way to get the most out of the tyre was and, uh, and, and adapted his style accordingly. That would be my summary. I think that's exactly right. I, mean, I, I clearly remember I wasn't in Formula 1 at the time, but um, it's many people felt that Ayrton's greatest tribute um, when he was driving the turbocharged cars was the way he was able to keep the keep using the throttle and keep the turbo spooled up. And the, when the regulations changed and normally aspirated, he would just kind of somehow sink back to being just like all the others. And of course, he wasn't because he was able to adapt his styles to the normally aspirated and keep his edge. And I think um, Sebastian is exactly the same. It doesn't matter how you change the regulations or the cars, he's able to adapt his driving to suit. 
just about seven years ago, when Red Bull started, uh, it was almost a joke in the pit lane. It was a lot of good time chaps and people thought you weren't very terribly interested in the racing itself. Uh, <clears throat> Christian, a lot of that's revolved around you. So when you came into this factory, which was Jaguar, what, what were the problems that you saw and how did you set about putting them right? Red Bull coming into Formula One, Dietrich had you know, high ambitions and um, that was when I thought well, we need the very best in the business to lead this, this technical team and um, bumped into Adrian looking at uh, the motor home that we'd just set up next to Ron Dennis's palatial thing in, in the first European Grand Prix um, and we were making a bit of noise and, and, and you know, Adrian was the absolute standout guy that, that we wanted to have with us. It just took another six or seven months to persuade him um, <laughs> to, to come. So. Adrian, you look after the, after the car side. Now, unless I'm very much mistaken, your mate Bobby Rahal had a, had a go at trying to get you here before. Yeah. Uh, what was Christian able to say to you that Bobby wasn't? McLaren then, I've been there for some years. Um, been lucky enough to have lots of success with them and just felt I needed a new challenge and um, the challenge which I thought would be exciting would be to be involved with the new team more or less from the start, be centrally involved in um, with the team principal Christian obviously and how that team grows and develops with the hope and aspiration of winning races and championships basically to set myself the challenge of could I achieve that. Matt Christian was he said initially sort of admiring the new energy station as it's called um, and we started to get to know each other um, and at the same time David Coulthard started talking to him and he said well, look I think Christian's a good guy, I think the team has stability, um, Didrik Maschitz is in for the long run so David's advice if you like as a friend was this could be a great avenue for you. Would it be true then to say that at McLaren you had to fit into a system and at Red Bull you could make your own system? There is an element of that, certainly the McLaren <coughs> system is um, a very well evolved management system, um, lots of the senior personnel there are ex-British Aerospace, so it's a very structured environment um, and I'm perhaps a little bit of a maverick so I wouldn't say that it was it was necessarily a, a, a clash, but it's probably us, the, the, the very ordered structure of McLaren um, wasn't necessarily my ideal, let's say. Um, I enjoyed working there, don't get me wrong, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a huge contrast to Williams. And here we have a, a much less structured system. How, how do the two of you work together? I mean, you know, do you say that you get on with the car and I'll I, get on I, with it? I tell him to get the money in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I spend no, it. he spends it, yeah. Let's work out how we're going to pay for it. Allegedly, you know, but allegedly that, that was the way it was at Williams. Frank, Frank would get the money and, and Patrick, on the design side, would spend it. So is that a comparable situation here? It's a solution that works pretty well. <laughs> pretty well. But, uh, yeah, no, I mean, Adrian is, is, you know, responsible for all the technical side of the... Of the business, there's, there's uh, you know a great many engineers that are reporting to him, and it's great to see the young guys interacting with the experience that Adrian has, and it's 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 rewarding for them. And I think you know it's it's you enjoy it, or you look yeah. like you enjoy it I as do. well, it's, working with the youngsters, yeah. you know, getting the most out of them. Well, you obviously make a fantastic partnership. You've achieved an incredible pass with two successive world championships for drivers and constructors. Uh, every success for 2012 and thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.